Hello, I want to make a video today about the symptoms of narcissistic abuse, especially covert narcissistic abuse. Um, there are lots of other videos out there, which I really uh, hope you've seen or watching also. Um, I'm specifically wanting to reach out to people who don't know yet, so I hope you got here by hook or by crook, that they're suffering from, uh, that they come from a narcissistic situation. And so I, I'm going to go through some of the symptoms and what I'm hoping is, is people will begin to tick the boxes that apply to them. Not all of them, it's not a universal condition, I can only talk about what happened to me, um, but uh, I, I've been through a very, very tough uh, uh, narcissistic uh, situation um, and I suspect... I don't know, but I suspect that I'm I'm deep into the seventy five percent level of how tough it can get. Um, you, it's for you to judge as I go. But basically, um, a lot of things are going to be wrong with you that aren't easy to identify as medical illnesses. Okay, um, and that's why we need each other in this community to talk about it because it's only once you've got this information that you start to put it together, that it's not your fault, that you're not weak. I mean, let's start with simple things. Your immune system, right, will be lower. I've got a cold right now. I, I'm getting colds constantly. Your immune system is going to be less robust than other people's. Why is that? The reason for that is that you have been under an enormous amount of stress. We're going to talk about that a bit later on. I'm going to justify that later on. You've been under a very insidious level of stress, right? Uh, the reason for that is that the game that has been played with you, if you are coming from a family where our narcissists are empowered to dictate over you, the game or, or a relationship... Because whatever it is, is, is a narcissistic situation is like a spider's web and you're the fly. Okay? And basically, the idea of the web is once you're in that web, right, you're not getting out. I mean, there's not one strand of that spider's web that's going to lead to the exit, right? You know, you, you, you're, in, you're in it. And any move you make... Is it just just makes you more the spider's victim? Okay, and what they do is they the words that you'll hear on other websites are triangulation. That's one of the words. Um, gaslighting is another word, um, and and many other terms. And what this is is you have been cast in a role in the narcissistic situation you're in, right? And it is as far as the narcissist are concerned, for them to be who they need to be. This is a this is a game of where the where the goal right the the, the 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 score moment is for everybody to get who are being narcissistic to 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 see themselves the way they want that's what's going on in a way it's as simple as that okay there there are there is more to it but that's your, if you if if you could grasp that then I think that's your first line that you cross. Once you want, that's really what's at stake. That's why narcissists can appear to be quite nice. That's why narcissists can appear to, you know, be, be utterly reasonable, right? But but that but it's but that reasonableness is always being counterweighted with the way they are other times, the way that you know they've been. You know, the things that they have said when nobody else was around or in front of other people when you've been sort of framed in a situation to look bad. Um, you know, you're good, you know you're abuser. You know? You at least know them as well as you know yourself. However good or bad that is. Okay? So let's, let's go with that. Let's start with that. <coughs> What am I really saying here is it's getting dark. Um, so first thing is your immune system. Yeah, sorry. Your immune system's low. The reason it's low is because you are much more stressed than you realise. Okay. You're going to not realise how stressed you are for these reasons. You've probably been told that you've got nothing to be upset about. You've probably been told that you've got nothing to be stressed about. Right. What's wrong with you? What have you got to complain about? That's the sort of stuff you're going to hear. All right. Um, when you get things wrong because you're hyper 
ventilating a little or, or stress, I don't mean literally hyperventilating, but when you're kind of like hypersensitive, hyperventilating, hyperconscious, hyper um, sensitive to the, uh, everything's exaggerated in your emotional setup because you're constantly thinking about what could go wrong, right? That's not your fault. That's because you're used to having who you are, what you are, and your circumstances dictated to you, and then judgments laid upon you that really are... You, you, let's keep it simple. You've been set up to fail. All right? The reason you're set up to fail is because what the narcissist set up, the narcissists in your life want, is they want to see themselves the way they want to see themselves, which is superior which is um, elegant and thoughtful and f for them to get that when they're quite when they're just ordinary people right they need someone in their circle who they have to despair about who they have to help who they have to carry who they have to um, um, be abused by actually a lot of things they do will be passive aggressive to get you to lose your temper so they can despair there's just no talking to him or her that's what they want they they are elevating themselves right way beyond right what any normal human being should should want they're elevating themselves to the level of a lord or a king and to get that they need a low water mark for their high water mark and sorry, honey, baby, buddy, it's you. It's you and it's me. If you've been in a narcissistic relationship, um, this starts really quite early on. I mean, I mean, a few weeks into it, it'll start. You'll get your first pebble in your shoe. First few weeks in, you didn't know this about them. They've already they've already given you lots of things to make them indispensable to you. They've you know. They've made sure you fall in love with them, and then it starts, right? Um, you'll know because the tr first bit of triangulation will be, they'll try and shame you, right? And if they've tried to shame you in a way that has led you out of the boundaries of the relationship to seek, um, you know, third party response, right? You'll find out they've already covered it. They'll, they're already out there doing third party on you. I mean, probably, actually probably before the argument, before the thing, whatever it is they said, they've already set you up. They've already said things to people like, somebody said, oh, how's it going with so-and-so? And they've said, oh, it's going fine. It's just, and then whatever it is they're gonna sting you with, they've started it. Because they know you're gonna react when you, you know, when you uh, come back on. And of course, people must be watching this who aren't narcissistic victims, thinking, but that's just relationship, that's just life. When something does bother you about a partner. But believe me, it, yeah, it starts relatively small, right? But it, if it's a narcissistic situation, it gets completely, obscenely out of control. And, and I, I've been there. I really know what I'm talking about. So do many others. It gets so peculiar. You know, and basically what they sort of do is they sort of they take telling tales out of school to a whole level, which and it's amazing that it's, it's kind of amazing, actually, that nobody stops them and says you're telling tales out of school. People, they always find a way to get people to sort of listen and nod. And, they, and yet when you complain, you're telling tales out of school. It's one of the most remarkable bits of social engineering you know, miniature social engineering you'll ever see in your life, you know? Right, stress. This is why you're stressed. Because one of the most stressful things in life is feeling you've got to defend yourself against an invisible case, like in Kafka's The Trial, and defend yourself against an invisible case that has been built against you. We've no idea why, what you've done wrong, you know? What you've done to deserve any of this, yeah? You know, and and uh, it is, it, and and that is like a dripping tap of stress, and that is over here, always going, and that is quite apart from whatever else you've got going on in your life. All right, you might have, you're probably if you're working and you are a victim of narcissistic abuse, you're going to have attracted, you're going to be pulling out abusive behaviour in, in 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 all the people that have got a streak of bullying in them, 
You're going to be, you're, they can smell you. They can smell it on you. You know? And, and, there's, and there'll be other stuff. There'll be uh, the things you're trying to achieve. If you're a victim of narcissistic abuse, you're, you will be trying to claw back something from life all the time. To, tell, to, to show yourself that you have some value and some worth. So you're probably ambitious in, in your own way. May, if, you're, if you're creative, if you're a musician, you're probably part of the local music scene. Um, or if you are uh, an actor, you might have joined an amateur dramatic society. All of these situations are rife with narcissistically abusive people, right? And you are just a, you just got, and you will be walking around with a target on your back and trying to achieve something just to prove to yourself that you have some value. Because I tell you now, you don't feel valued. Not if you're a victim of narcissistic abuse, right? So that all that's going on, okay? And this is all stress, right? If you're stressed, your body is working to combat that stress all the time. Your poor old body, that's a drain on resources. That's like your house is, uh, it's middle of winter, right? And you've got the heating on to keep the house at a reasonable heat. And somebody's going around opening all the windows, right? So your heating system is having to work much, much harder than it would, right? It still works. It still keeps the house warm, right? But the heat is going out all the time. And that's your starting position. That's where you start from. When your day starts, that's, and that's why you wake up feeling so bad. Okay. So first of all, your immune system's down. That took half an hour or something. What am I going to do? <coughs> it took 10 minutes. Um, right. Second set of symptoms I want to talk about. Right. By the time you're an adult, you're going to have some very, very strange ideas about interacting with people. And um, you've been reared, that's my favourite word for this, to be kind of very complicit and very um, will willing to please. Um, and this is because you've been in a situation where you had to run your wheels just to keep up with the demands put on you by your narcissistic abusers, all right? So basically, in short, nothing you could ever do was good enough, whether it was in a family situation or your relationship, all right? Um, and a common complaint, we all feel this way. With narcissism, it's a pathological condition, uh, a pathological situation. Or you have been pathologised as useless, right? No matter what you did, no matter what grades you got, right? This can happen with, this can happen with ordinary bad parents. But with narcissism, it's, like I say, it is clinically, pathologically gone too far. You know, you are a, you have been systematically and constantly run down and, You'll notice, if it's a family situation, your siblings weren't held to the same level that you were. All right? I, I could give you examples, but I'm trying... I've made, a, I've made a decision not to talk about personal stuff and try and keep this in the normal domain. But I, I know there were things that I... You know, it'd be things like... Oh, I'll, do, I'll go here with it. I, 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 I had a narcissistic girlfriend... It had a, I, I went to her house and, I, I, and she had a go at me for leaving the toilet seat up. Now, I know it's a classic one, right? But the, the, the level of seriousness she gave to this was massively exaggerated. I mean, she tried to shame me with it and said even my brother wouldn't leave the, wouldn't leave the toilet seat up at home. Right. She hadn't discussed it with me. She hadn't said, oh, please leave the toilet seat up. No, it was like it was it was like it was it, it was so bad. She was so nasty to me that at the end of the night I said, look, you know, I know you're not very happy. I don't you know, I, I said, look, I think I think we should take a break because she was always by that point. She's been complaining about me and our relationship a lot. And I said, look, I don't think I'm making you happy because it wasn't the toilet seat. It was that it obviously made her so upset I was obviously not good enough for her. So I, and, and that started a whole other thing. But you see, the point is, is let's say in your family home or, or if somebody, or in a relationship, let's say that, 
Okay, so you get your head kicked in for leaving the toilet seat up, right? And yet, say, a few nights later, some friends around, lots of friends, four or five friends, right? And an old friend of hers, somebody that maybe been in her house several times before, and they could leave the toilet seat up and you can't. That's how you know narcissism. Because your role is to be the victim. Your job is to be the person who they get to feel better. Because it's all, they're almost like saying, I might... Then no... I was going to say, they're almost saying, I might not be that much, but I'm better than them. But it's not that at all. They're saying, I am a lord. I am a king. I'm a princess. I am a queen. But to be a queen, they have to have subjects. And, when, and people know so much more about each other than they realise. On site, people make assessments about each other. Valuable, work, useful, worthwhile assessments, right? It, they really do. And you do. You do. You can detect narcissists, you know, whether you know it or not. You know on sight if you're dealing with a narcissist abuser. You just don't dare believe yourself. Or well, you didn't. You used to. So you don't ever discount your initial and, and and people and and keep it to yourself. Because, it, because people will blow up. The reason you don't believe yourself is when you've tried to confront people in your family or friends or uh, uh, boyfriends or girlfriends who are narcissistic. You've tried to confront them about their behaviour and they've blown up at you and they've come out with really good reasons why you're wrong and why you don't know what you're talking about, right? Okay? That's what they've done. <coughs> um, and, and it's... And it's and they're good reasons. And you weren't prepared for this argument. You weren't prepared for a full-fledged row. And being a narcissistic victim, you're doubting yourself, right? You're doubting yourself anyway, because you're always wrong about these things. You're always wrong about everything. I'm going to have to put a light on. Just bear with me. Because you're always wrong uh, about everything, right? And... Uh... my thread so you know you try there was a time when you tried they stamp that down they're not having you thinking for yourself okay so basically the uh the next thing you're gonna find <coughs> is that emotionally you're very erratic because you're used to having kind of like flushes of emotion you know that you're used to being any time that you maintain the kind of any attempt to maintain kind of common ground nice calm line that was interrupted by like an explosion there's a beautiful song by morrissey when he uses the line emotional air raids exhausted my heart well for the narcissist victim right everything's an emotional air raid all right, because and, and, and if it's been done right and by right, I mean, this is evil, this stuff. Right. If they've done a good job of screwing you up. Right. You probably don't even know how to hold a line and keep yourself together. I didn't. I had to learn. I had to, it took me decades to, to unpick because basically you will be minding your own business and the narcissist will swoop in and upset you and leave. All right, they will. It's like if you're trying to hold it together, it's like you're doing a jigsaw puzzle and you're putting the last piece in place. They'll come up, knock it all out of your hands, and leave. All right, emotionally, and it might even be something you've done or forgotten to do or whatever. So what? You don't deserve it. Not unless. Not unless you've done something yourself, utterly cruel and destructive. And I doubt that, because the narcissist victim is trying so hard to do everything right. Because they've learned they have to, to survive. They've put the TV on the right channel when the narcissist came home from work. You know? When their younger siblings or other siblings start acting up, they, they start to feel sick. Because they know they're going to upset the narcissist and the narcissist is going to come after them. You know, that's the reality. So emotion, that's your second set of symptoms. Again, like no doctor's going to diagnose you for that. They'll, they'll talk, they might think you're, you're depressed or whatever. But, you know, basically, the second set of symptoms, they've turned you into hysteric. Okay? So we've got low immune system and we've got hysteria. 
right? I don't mean you're a lunatic. I don't mean you can't. I don't mean that you shouldn't be taken seriously. I don't mean that. Um, I mean your emotions are the emotions of a hysteric. They, 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 they spike. They drop. They're all over the shop. They're like a, they're like a, you know, they're like a kind of massive nutty sine wave, right? And it's not fair. And that's a state that you're managing all the time. If you're working, think about that. Imagine if you're working and you're trying to concentrate. God, I can't drive. Imagine if you've got to drive, with all this going on, you're not starting from ground. You know what, ground is like in the middle for you, and you're constantly in the subterranean, then up in the mountains, and in the subterranean, and that's your second set of symptoms. Third set of symptoms, and this is the most important one, I'm surprised I didn't start with this one, fatigue. You will get so tired, and you won't know it. Because all anybody ever says to you is, oh, we all get tired sometimes. Yeah. Yes, they do. We all get tired sometimes. I'm not talking about tired. I'm talking about the symptoms of a hangover. That, that's your normal reality. That's how most of the time you have a, a fugue-like hangover, symptomy sort of thing and it, you, we're talking brain fog when your brain just isn't sharp we're talking um exact uh, there's a great video about this which i'm going to put a link to about something called executive function right which is that your brain's way of getting you through the day and it's like the sh your, your, your brain's way of shopping listing through the day right so for most people this is a healthy functioning um kind of um you know machine yours is in breakdown right uh, this is the thing that gets you from waking up in the morning sleepy dozy not really awake to putting your feet in your slippers your feet firmly on the floor you erect walking around putting the kettle on you've got to go from that state to somebody at work in an hour right executive function takes care of that if you're a narcissistic victim that won't work very well because for you all cause and effect things don't work, right? You're dealing with stress. You're dealing with um, a, a poor immune system. You're dealing with um, being codependent with everybody you know. There's an, there'll be an element of codependency, and that's your that's the emotional stuff we talked about earlier, right? <clears throat> your brain is so busy managing, right, all this stuff, right? Okay, that executive function is actually the top layer that starts to go. So what you'll find is, if you're anything like as ill as I've been, right, you'll be in the middle of a job and you'll just, you'll have forgotten what you were doing. The multitasking becomes an act of massive will. You'll just, it, <sighs> A lot of people will just write this off as having like a sort of senior moment. But you know, you know that sometimes you go upstairs to go and get something and you get there and your mind has wandered and you get up there and you can't, you've forgotten what you're up there for. You can't remember what it was. Actually, you're going to have to go all the way downstairs again, right, to uh, sort it out. Well, listen, having this, when this executive function thing breaks down, that's happening all the time. I mean, it can happen walking down the street. It can happen while you're washing up. It's just you. It, the, the connections don't fire anymore, and there's a reason for that. And I should really make this its own point. There's a reason for that, right? And I don't know how to get into it yet, but I must before the video ends. So let's call that fatigue. It, it, it. The more you fight the breakdown of executive function and try and get past it, the more tired you'll get. And eventually, you will find, you'll, you'll get to the point where you just lie in bed, staring at the ceiling, suffering from what your doctors will misdiagnose as depression. It's not depression, right? It, it, it's depression in there, but it's not depression. What you are is you're just worn out, utterly worn out. And any move you make, right, to fix it, it's gonna dictate you in deeper. So I'm gonna go to my next one now, which will be the main one, and that is, I was just talking about. Let me just see if I can recap. Give me a second. Yeah, it's it's kind of part B <coughs> to the last one, but it should be a thing in itself. The tiredness 
um, the fatigue, why it's there. And this is its own thing. Um, basically, your unconscious mind, you can't access it, you can't think like this. The, the part of your will, your inner will, it knows that this is not healthy for you, any of it. It knows your situation, it's very unhealthy. And this part of you, this animal part of you, and please see a lot of Spartan Life Coaches stuff on this, he is uh, absolutely the best place to go for talking about this. So I'm not gonna um, rip off his work, I'm gonna put a big link to that, but I, I wanna reach out to you today and put you on the road to, to Richard's work on Spartan Life Coach, because you will lose your mind. He is sharp as a razor on this. Um, your your uh, inner voice, your inner consciousness, right? Um, despairs at what you're doing, at what you're putting up with. If we were in, if we were like back in the dawn of man time, and you, we were in a pack, by now you would have either, you know, killed someone who was doing this to you, right? Or you would have. Um, had a hysterical fit and been taken to the witch doctor or the shaman or something like that you know you would if you would if you got so sick you couldn't move you lay in bed all day that would be that would be an option right in this society in this narcissistic culture that we're in that absolutely promotes and allows narcissism you're made to get on with it and accept unacceptable behavior unacceptable behavior by people who have trapped you and trapped you in your mind all right they have all kinds of ways of trapping you in there right and then they make and the work and the best bit is they make you turn the key and pass the key through the under the door to them we'll talk about that more another day the reason you're so sick Right. Apart from the fact that your body is literally exhausted, right, is your brain is also trying to shut you down. Your inner brain is trying to stop you. It's trying to close the gates between you and this life you're in. And if nothing is working, it will reduce, it will make you bed bound. And, uh, and I have been in a situation I'm trying not to get into personal details. I've been in a personal situation where I was at that level where my unconscious was trying to make me bed bound, right? And I had to get up because I was a full time carer for somebody. And it was hell. There is no limit, and your strength, there is no end to human strength, and there is no end to your, the strength of your unconscious, and we were fighting it out, and my unconscious just wanted me to stop, it just wanted me to give up, it just, it, 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 out of the, 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 the will to survive in you is so strong, it's so incredibly strong, right, and it will, if you can imagine you running towards the end of a cliff, right? And imagine angelic hands trying to grab you, little tiny baby angelic hands holding you back, but you being so determined you're going to run over that cliff. Why are you running towards the cliff? Because you, you, you really feel you've got no choice. For Your programming goes deep. Every day I had to get up and look after the person I was looking after, right? Had to do it. Moral imperative stuff had to be done. But on a personal survival level, psychologically, physically, everything, my unconscious was trying to tell me, don't do it, be selfish, give up, run away, do whatever you've got to do. But, my, my, but the other part of me, these two, these two parts of me in, in opposition, my soul, the thing that makes me me, that could not give up on this person, right, couldn't do it. And it, it rips you apart. It rich. It's also how people end up in relationships with people that are alcoholics and addicts and want to save them as well. All, it's all going on. And this is part of the human story. This, is, this has been a part of human history for, since we started, right? When, when you're the victim of narcissism, especially if you've been brought up in a narcissistic family unit, right? With the uh, narcissistic overlord, the enabling partner, and then the golden child, and the victim, which is you and me. And then the, if there are any of the children, they end up falling somewhere in that bracket between those two poles of the uh, 
golden child and the victim, um, depending on the situation. As long as that narcissistic overlord is getting his supply off the victim, he doesn't need to spread it around that much. Okay, now I've done my main points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to review this video. Hopefully I think it's good enough to post. Um, I'm very, if, you, if you've got anything out of this, this is, and this is the first contact you've had, you're going to enter a whole world of discovery. And I'm going to put some posts beneath here that um, will lead you to the uh, most important um, testifiers for somebody new to this. Um, I, I want to make it very clear that while everything I've talked about today is from my own personal experience and I, I've, a lot of the things that I'm talking about now I have thought myself, um, the meat and bones of it has been done clinically well by some of the other testifiers um, and uh, I am very indebted to them for helping me complete my journey towards understanding what has happened and you will be very grateful to them too I think when you hear what they have to say but the idea of this video is a kind of primer this is my primer to victims of narcissism and that's why I've made it and I hope it was useful thank you for listening any comments would be gratefully appreciated and um, good luck good luck